Hi, my name is Roland and we are sitting here below one of my solar areas and today we have a solar basics video and we are talking about a very important topic which is grounding and surge protection. So when we are talking about grounding of a solar system we are essentially talking about two things. The first is the structural grounding and the second is the surge protection. Both of them will finally end up somewhere at the ground rod, but it's completely two different things. The structural grounding, of course, that one means you have your solar panels, your frames, which need to be grounded. You can see here the grounding wires. And then, of course, if you have a metal mount, like I have it here, I have stainless steel here, so this will also be somewhere grounded. So I have here connected the, stain, the frame towards a grounding cable. This goes down here and all is ending up in my ground rod. Why we do need structural grounding? The structural grounding is there just to prevent, let's say, a lightning from a thunderstorm. If you get a hit somewhere into the frame or into your mount, that that energy is directly diverted into the soil, of course. For any normal circumstance, it is not possible that the generated energy of the solar panel will come into contact with the structure because it's isolated. We will talk about this just in a moment when I show you this exactly on a solar panel. Only in the case of a damage of your solar array, let's say by hail or something like this, when you have really broken solar panels, then there is the chance that your structural grounding will also carry some energy from your solar cells. So in the normal circumstances, the structural grounding is there for lightning protection and then also for failures in the wirings. If there's, uh, for example, wires which broke or maybe some critters chewed through the insulation and this is then touching some parts of the panels of frames. So that is the structural uh, grounding for. Okay, let's talk uh, quickly about the solar panel. We can do this on this small one. What is a solar panel build of? It's essentially only five parts. First is the aluminum frame. Second, the glass surface. Then, below the glass surface, you have the cells with its bus bars. And then, you have the plastic back sheet and the connection cables. That's already it. And if you look from the back side, we can see it best. There is essentially no connection between frame and the cells. The power plane is completely isolated from the outside part, so especially from the frame. Glass is a non-conductive material, of course as well the plastic back sheet. So there is no way that for a good panel, which is not damaged, there is any connection between anything what is uh, carrying power inside to outside to the frame. Of course, nothing is 100%. So that's why we are talking about the isolation resistance from inside to outside. But f even for this small kind of panel, it is a very high resistance, which is somewhere around the mega ohms. For this small panel, maybe two mega ohms or more. And for even the bigger panels, it's even much more. So maybe around 20 mega ohms. So a very high resistance. You cannot measure uh, that resistance with a standard multimeter. You need a really specialized isolation uh, meter to, to measure that. 
in which uh, case can there be uh, a problem? When can that isolation resistance be basically broken? Uh, there's only more or less one case, and that is when you break the glass. If you break the glass, when you have rain or something, water can go into the cracks and go below the glass surface into the cell structures and then of course water is conductive and it will collect somewhere between plastic glass and touch the frame and then the is isolation resistance will drop rapid rapidly right and once you have a broken panel because then some power will go from cells directly to the frame then you have of course a drop in the power output of the panel. That is how you can see that there is a problem with the isolation resistance. You have a broken panel and the power output is going down rapidly. So what is the other thing then? This is a combiner box of two strings of this area. I have here three combiner boxes. This one has one string. On the other side there's another one for one string and this one has two strings inside. The solar power DC comes in into this combiner box, goes over the string fuse and then is entering this orange thing here and this is called a surge protection device. And the purpose of this surge protection device is simply that if you have a voltage spike coming somehow into your power lines that will most probably also originate from a lightning then there will be a temporary connection from your power lines to ground so this is very important that there is only a temporary connection otherwise uh, you would always pull some of your power to the ground which you don't want of course what is inside of this thing? There is something inside, a component called a varistor. It's a voltage dependent resistor. And if you get a power spike, a voltage spike, which typically has a more than 1000 volts, up to several thousand volts, then this varistor will basically get conductive and open up a path to ground. You can read this. On the specifications of this device. In this case the surge protection device is rated for a nominal voltage of 500 volts DC and you see the next line that is the clamping voltage so 630 volts if the voltage goes above that value then the varistor inside will start to get conductive and open up the pass. The IN is the nominal clamping current this is 20,000 amps and the maximum 40,000 amps any current spike which is generated by the voltage spike of up to 40,000 amps can be diverted through this device and it will still be operational after you have a small window here uh, it is showing green at the moment that means that the surge protection device did at least not overload yet. So if it ever have activated, the currents have been well inside the specifications. So because it could be that if the current goes above the maximum current, the varistor will essentially shorten out. And then there will be a pass a, like a bridge inside a solder bridge something like that which will be melted and the window will turn uh, yellow or red and you will it will indicate that the surge protection device has overloaded and is uh, unfunctional anymore then you have to exchange it this type of surge protection device which are mounted on the DIN rail here you can actually when the device is overloaded you can pull this inner part out and replace it by a new one so those uh, surge protection devices 
are there for a reason. They have to protect your electronic devices, your inverter, from a high voltage spike, which could then destroy it. Where do you have to put those uh, surge protection devices? Uh, that is written normally in the electric code of your uh, area. But the general rule of thumb is you need to put a SPD near your inverter first. So your inverter has a DC input, your inverter has an AC output, and you would have to place a DC SPD and the AC SPD near to your inverter. That is the rule number one. But then it depends how long is your uh, supply line from your array to your inverter. If it's below 10 meters, then one SPD next to your inverter is enough. If it's more than 10 meters or 30 feet, then you need to also place SPDs at your array. At my off-grid system, it looks like this. We have a carport, this side, this side. I have three arrays on this roof and the combiner box here. This one has, of course, a DC SPD inside. Then, here on this roof are two arrays and we have a combiner box here at the corner with a DC SPD inside there too. So from there, this is about 20 meters until here this goes down here too, and the inverter is inside this building another 20 meters away. So at this inverter, also inside, DC SPD plus AC SPD. So this here is now the load center here from my off-grid system. And as you see here, first the DC input from the solar panels is coming into the DC surge protector. And here I have my DC main breaker, so I can deactivate all the arrays before the inverter. This goes to the inverter and is coming back as AC and the AC has its own surge protection device here too. So the off-grid system has three surge protection devices overall and this is just because the lines are very long so kind of probably somewhere around uh, 50 meters for the longest run and this requires three surge protection devices as you saw structural grounding is pretty straightforward surge protection you have to follow a few general rules and don't skip any of those because otherwise it's your expensive equipment and you don't want to damage it. A few years ago I had a lightning strike in the, into the AC side of my off-grid system and it damaged basically every device behind the inverter. Because the inverter, there was the surge protection device installed and also the inverter internally has a lot of uh, varistas at its input. So those devices are protected, you have to be aware that something can always happen. And you better be prepared than later to be sorry. Okay, so thank you for watching today's video. Please comment, like, subscribe and I'll see you next time.